So back in VS Code, I'm going to go ahead and remove all of this. And I'm going to call this my params. And I'm going to call the constructor again. So it should be params. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. So here in this constructor, you can see that it takes options, which is of type HTTP params options. So we can go ahead and take a look at this class. So you see, it takes a string array, and then you can pass it a string or a read-only string array. So let's go back to the service. So what we can do here, we can just say set again to pass in some values. So we can say, hey, I want to set a page and Let's set this to like let's say five and also another thing you can do you can keep chaining those so i can call set again or append and i can pass in some new values and then let's say sort and let's pass a value let's say true or something okay so we're telling the server hey we are trying to make this request and we want page five well that has to be a string by the way and then we're sorting it we let's say the back end understands those uh, parameters and then here all we have to do here so I'm going to show you again if we go inside the definition of this get you can see that it takes params okay so the key is params and then we pass in our params so let's go back and instead of headers we're going to pass params as our options and then we can pass my params just like that okay so now if we go back to the browser and go back to our application uh, let's refresh and let's go here you can see if i expand this you can see we have page five in sort equal true. Okay. This server doesn't understand this. So obviously we're not, these, these are not being used in the back end, but you can see they're being set here. So let's go back to the code and it's the same with the append. So I can say my params and then equal my params that append. And then I can pass in some key and some values again. So I can say name and then I can pass in my name here. Okay. So that would work as well. But the only thing you have to remember is this is immutable. So if I have this, this code doesn't work, okay? Because you can't change the instance itself. It's immutable. So whenever we create this my params, it's immutable, okay? So it's gonna do this and then return an instance. And if we call append again, it's gonna return another instance with the additional value that we passed in. If we keep it like this, you'll see that, uh, well, I'm, I can actually show you that. So if we go back and refresh the page and you can see we don't see that one that we pass it with my name. But if we change this to my headers, uh, my params, okay? So whatever instance this is gonna return, you reassign it again to this value here, which is why I'd find a let here and not a const because we're changing this, this value here again on that line. So now it should, it should be there. So if we go back, as you can see, name equals junior. And again, the difference is with set, it's gonna override the value if the value already exists. With a pen, it's just gonna add one more. So if I do copy this and then paste it down, so you see the keys are the same, but then let's say I pass in some random name, John, okay? And save that, go back to the browser. You can see it passed names, junior, and then name equals John. If I extend this, okay, you can see it here. So it puts the name two times. So now let me show you how to use the constructor. So let me go back and let's go into the signature again. So you see, it takes the constructor for the HTTP params. It takes an HTTP params option, okay? And we're gonna call it options as you can see here. So if we go into this class, you can see it takes a read-only array or a string, and then you can call from string or from object. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to use those as well. So let's go back to the service and on top of the class, let's go ahead and define some params so read only because that's it has to be read only and then more params let's say and then let's say this is equal to some array okay i'm going to show you how to use the from object so here let's say we're going to pass in two values so name or something like test and then pass in test again let's say test two okay so now we have this read only array so what we can do when we call the constructor is gonna remove these. So inside of the constructor, we can do something like this. So remember it takes some, uh, let me show you again, HTTP params options. And when we look at those, you can see you have from string and then from object. You can see the from object is an object with an array of string and then a string or a read-only array of string. So we're doing the 
read-only array of string. So here, I'm going to remove those so that you can be clear. So we can do something like this, uh, the params, and then set it equal to an object, because remember, the option is an object. And then this needs a key and a value. So remember, the key can be an array of strings. So we're going to say, let's say this is test list, and then set the value to this, that, more params. Okay, so this is the read-only that we have defined on the class. So now what we can do is I'm going to remove the constructor and then put it after this. And inside of that constructor, we can call the from object. OK, so I can say from you can see I have the option coming up because it's part of the signature. And then I can pass in the params just like that. So now if we go back to the browser and refresh and if we look at this. You can see he was able to extract the value and then set them. And if you go back, we set this as the name. So test list is the key and the value is test and then test two. Or maybe we should name this test one. And then if you want to use the constructor that way, then you have to call the from object. And what it's going to do is just going to extract those values and pass them in this here. Or what we could do is we could just pass in this entire object in here as well. So we didn't have to define this extra variable here. We could have done something like this and that would work as well. So this is the key and those are the values. And since this query parameter is going to set it like multiple times, so it's going to fit test list and then it's going to do test one and then test list test two. As you can see here, that's exactly what we get. OK, so test list test one and test list test two. And to call the from string is very similar. So if we go again in here, you can look at the HTTP params option. So if I go in there, you can see we just did the from object here and the from string is just a string. So you just put a string and then call the from string and then you pass in the list of all the strings. So let me show you that as well. So let's do from string and then here we just pass in a string value. So we can do something like um, name equal uh, junior and ID equals, let's say 58. So what from string is going to do is going to extract those values and then add them to the URL. So now if we go back and we look at this, you can see name, junior, ID 58. So that's the from string is simpler than the from object. The from object just takes the values out of an array and you can set it just like this. Uh, you put the key and then you put the array value. And it's gonna set it for every value. So it's gonna take test list, test one, and then test list equal test two. From string, you just pass into the string like this and then it's just going to extract the values, put them in the URL. And again, if you don't want to do it that way, you can just call the constructor and then you can call set or you can call append and you can just pass in a key and a value and you can change those together as well. So if I do this, I can also call it again and then call it again or call the set method. And like I said, you can also do the string manipulation yourself. So you go in here and then pass in your values inside of this function right here and you can do the string manipulation, but that's a little bit harder. And that's exactly why we have this issue params here, because we can use this class to set those values and it's going to make everything easier for us. And you can go inside of this class and you can use some of the other functions that you see in here, but it's pretty straightforward. It's not really complicated. So it's very simple to use. We're going to continue looking at all the other options and I'm going to show you what they mean. So as, as you can see here, we have report progress, response type with credentials, and observe. So we're going to take a look at those as well.